All right, well, kind of a lighter group today. I'm kind of guessing as we come back and uh, the semester starting <laughs> is keeping a lot of people <laughs> pretty busy. I, I think most of the Europeans are on like vacation they are on, this month. Yeah, yeah, holiday. So August is always kind of a lighter month anyway. Um, and this is always, at least at my university, the time when they're like, we, everybody must meet right now. It's kind of like the, the last week of the year when everybody's like, we all must meet before we leave. <laughs> so. All the dog and pony shows are this week. So we're just like talking <laughs> open source swag at every, in everyone's direction. And, and yeah. so you have the meetings plus the swag, um, you know, sessions. So it's been, it's been crazy town. All right. Hi, David. Minutes are in the chat. I'm guessing things are just rolling for you too. Okay, um, let me share my screen. We don't have a lot on the agenda today, so just a kind of a few things. Um, one, I was hoping to get some feedback. I've been um, working with Allison about putting together a small workshop to the NSF, kind of one of those you know under fifty thousand dollar, hopefully program officer approved workshops. Um, and the idea was. You know, bringing together folks from from university ospos to think about um, things that you're working on, um, how metrics are playing a role in that. Um, so just you know, kind of bringing people together to talk about the things that we've been talking about in this in this group. Um, I think right now the intention, if funded, would be to have uh, such a convening in Madison which would be awesome. So thank you, Allison. Madison's a fun town if you haven't been there yes. and it's <laughs> it's worth going. So um, I guess one of the things that I would um, kind of like to, to hear from people is if we were able to get together, you know, at some point we need to kind of put together an agenda that we need to put in front of a program officer. So if there are things that, that you would particularly like to talk about, it would be great to hear it here you know, and just kind of get some feedback that if we were able to spend a day or two together, things that you would want to talk about. How we take over the world. Well, okay, I can put that in. <laughs> How university ospos can play a, a role in domination. <laughs> I'm sure that'd be well received. With metrics, of course. With metrics. <laughs> it's always got a chaos angle. <laughs> if you don't measure it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry if I'm a little confused. Is this a is this a workshop for the NSF or is this just No, just it would be okay. Yeah, be funded by the NSF. Yep. And so it's really just a I think the the goal would be is is to bring university folks from university ospos or open source work efforts um, together for a couple of days just to you know put our heads together and kind of meet each other in person if we haven't done that already um, talk about things that are relevant for us as a group here and how metrics would play a role in that so that's what this would be about. So would. Um, I love I love the back the tie in back to the UN because I think one of the things that really struck me at the UN was just the integral role that that OSPOs really play in sort of connecting different software based projects across cities. That that whole municipality connection was really cool, um, and I just when I as I thought about it. Um, I was like, well, how how do you how do you sort of like bring that back to, you know, the university as a microcosm of the city, yeah. and then um, I think, um, so I love tying it into the SDGs. I think that's a great thing. I also think for our audience, the uh, communicating the value of those metrics so that they can communicate with the OVPR is going to be important to the people that we work with. <clears throat> um, I if that if you feel that's appropriate, that's the flip side of the coin. Can I ask you, like the communicating the value of metrics in terms of measuring um, how your work at the OSPO would have a positive impact on, say, one or two or a handful of the SDGs? Is that your thinking? So I think that's one aspect. And then mm -hmm. I think another is how we help our researchers communicate, use these metrics to communicate the value of their work. Okay. 
I contextualize it with the SDGs because that's sort of my corollary, but I think on campus, like my researchers need to be able to communicate to their deans the I value of their work. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so how to, I got it right there. And then the other is like how to help OSPOs communicate um, their impact on SDGs, for example, maybe I'm- On SDGs or yeah, or even on university goals. Okay. <clears throat> okay, right, which could or could not be aligned with those SDGs anyway. Yeah, and hey, while we're all here, yes. that survey from, I think it was the Ithaca survey, the one that we got as sort of like the mid report, it talked a lot about like, are we saving our university's money? I have never thought of my job as saving my university money. <laughs> Do others feel like, are we supposed to be tracking that? You know, I, that was an aside, <laughs> but they asked the question and I was like, if they're asking this, like, is it an expectation? I'm not tracking anything like that. I, I have been viewing our role as we are creating value, not necessarily saving money. Yeah, we're an empowerment place, not a cost yeah. place. We're helping projects make connections to increase their value and show impact, which leads to more funding dollars. And, you know, we're, yeah, I never thought about us as like a um, operational efficiency engine. <laughs> No, so when I got that question, I was like, oh my God, am I supposed to be doing this? <laughs> For what it's worth, I think they ask every group that question now. <laughs> well, okay. Well, that may, that explains it. <laughs> I view that as um, Sloan wanting us all to be sustainable and you know not being soft money eventually. And so they're just trying to figure out any way to, oh. to have it convert to be hard money. So any case that, argument that might help that case. That's how I yeah, take it. And I think particularly in the in the corporate OSPO space, I think they've put more of a focus on how does the OSPO create value for the organization, which I, I think is a is a good way to to frame it because you know ultimately if you wanna if you wanna keep your OSPO around um being able to show the value that it has to your organization <clears throat> makes a big difference. But yeah, I don't see it as like cost savings mechanism necessarily. And I don't even know how I would measure that. <clears throat> Maybe I mean, if you're getting sued all the time because you're not complying with licenses, then. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I don't think that's savings. a good case though. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gotten sued lately? Well, not yet. So there, I saved all those lawyers fees. <laughs> Um, how about, I actually, I, I like that even maybe not the lead is how to OSPO save money, but maybe how to OSPO think about value creation could be very interesting. It was part of this workshop. You know what I mean? I think so. I, we, so we're trying, not that we're being successful where we're having a little bit of trouble, but we're even trying to like track, we made like facility statements and we added ourselves into like data management planning so people can do like a little bit of software management planning. Mm -hmm. um, and we've tried to, we try to track about how, how much those things are used because our VPR keeps all of them in a big data bank so you can see what's downloaded and not. Um, so that we're gonna try to have an interesting conversation about value around, you know, how many people are actually using facility statements to communicate um, open source software resources as they're applying for grants as something that's valuable to funders, but we're the not- facilities, The statement that goes into the NSF proposals? Is the that NSF, DOD, DOE, okay. NIH, all of them have facilities statements, yeah. Yep. Okay. And what do you do with those? So- So our VPR has a- Oh, and this is one of the facilities that's mm -hmm. provided to this research team or available to this research team. And because of this availability, we help do X, Y, Z, and whatever it might be. Okay. And we help ensure compliance. And if it's not compliance with um, software reporting rules, then we help, we ship them over to the the, the tech commercialization office. Uh, okay. We have a partnership there. Okay. So we do that. Um, we're trying to get metrics around that, but that system just getting up and running. 
metrics around how many people are including that? Yeah. Okay. Oops. So that's not saving money, but it is helping to get money, hopefully. Well, it, actually, it's tied to the lawyer thing. If it's compliant stuff, <laughs> you're, you're helping people <laughs> not get in trouble with licenses. That's true. Okay. Um, Tom, did you have a comment you were going to make too on the workshop potential, like things? Yeah, I wanted to ask if anyone in this group has done the the NSF pose phase one trainings that they're having the cohorts do. I, I just I just got out of it like a week or two ago. This is with um, was it through ICOR? Remember? Yes, and it's Venture Well. Yeah, ran it. Um, br bringing it up because um, I was a uh, I was personally a little surprised that the heavy emphasis on it was because it was all customer discovery, but there's a heavy emphasis on using the business model canvas. Um, but as they were working through this workshop with all the different cohorts of, of phase one awardees, um, doing things like customer discovery, channel partnerships, things like that, and then pushing the groups to say like, okay, like now define your metrics and how are you going to track these things? And I felt like there was a little bit of a space for opportunity there. Cause it was, it was very much, uh, I think it was hit at a high level of like, come up with a metric. And so like the team I was helping with, you know, went with a metric of like, well, user growth is our metric. And, you know, we, we didn't have time within this workshop. I'm like, well, there's an opportunity to go a lot deeper here. Um, but just bringing up, bring it, connecting to this required training. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think it's going to keep coming up. Uh, I think that's, that's great. Cause um, so are you, is everybody familiar with i -Core at the NSF, at least historically, I don't know how it's tied to pose necessarily, but I always think of i -Core as a helping funded projects on a path towards commercialization is, is a step in that direction. Um, I, I sometimes tie it in my head with the SBIR, the small business stuff that the NSF supports as well. Um, so was the, Tom, was the, the, um, was the training kind of focused on that? Like how you think about sustainability through the creation of say a product <laughs> and how there's going to be a user community around that product. The, the focus on the training was heavily on the customer discovery, okay. but it was moving people through this traditional business model canvas. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to bring some different, like, this is, this is 100% my own personal opinion. Of course. Um, but I, I do feel like now hearing that with i -Corps, like it, it felt a little bit more towards the commercialization path. Mm -hmm. And as we're getting towards the end of this and people were presenting updated canvases and their value propositions for, for customer discovery, customer segments they were discovering, um, as we were getting towards the end, uh, the tail end of this was like, and now how are we going to attach, attach metrics to goals to prove these hypotheses? And okay. I think there's a lot of opportunity there to, for for a discuss for a much more like rich discussion around metrics and tying those to goals and how they don't necessarily need to be commercialization goals, but are still valuable to tie to these customer segments these groups are discovering. Okay. Gotcha. Um... Are at your universities, whether like at Texas or Madison or wherever, but are you helping um, open source projects in their thoughts about sustainability, kind of thinking about these things like customer discovery and paths towards commercialization? We had talked about this a long time ago with like that, the whole tech transfer office and kind of entering that cycle of things 
So we, we are partnered, I mean, not formally partnered, but we meet regularly with our tech transfer office and we, we talk about like some of our bigger projects that we have, but a good chunk of the projects that we work with on like a continual basis are mm -hmm. well-funded and not necessarily interested in entering the commercialization space because they're still like theoretical projects. They're not, they're yep. not applied projects. So I think, um, and, and I mean, we're, 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 we're into this a year now. And so we'll kind of need to see where the maturity level goes. We've only sent a couple over to our commercialization office. In fact, I think there's like four that we've sent. So I think that's a question I'd be interested in thinking about. Okay. Um, so maybe metrics about like user discovery, like what is that? whether it's commercialization or not, like who's using this stuff downstream and how we go about kind of measuring that. We're doing actually something. Do any of you, Tom, do you have a comment? Sorry. I, I just wanted to clarify um, with this training, I felt like there was more of a focus on commercialization, but I don't think that was the over, I mean, the, it was very much about like discovering and building ecosystems. So I don't feel like the end path being pushed was commercialization. I, I just feel like with this training in particular, I felt like there's a lot of models and emphasis on things that fit more cleanly with commercialization. But but overall, it was much more about, it's supposed to be about, you know, customer discovery as it serves building out your ecosystem. Okay, I got you. Um... So when you say customer discovery, are you is this a user to you? Is that how they treated yeah, so it? So I, th I think this is a good example and think it would be great to discuss in a workshop is like that was the language being used in i okay. Um And then we are just with the group I was working with, we were translating it into community discovery. We went back and talked to their users on Discord. But they were saying customer discovery because they were using this business model canvas as the uh, template, as the template that the workshop was based off of. And community discovery for you is identifying people who would have an interest in joining a community of people to work on a particular technology or help support that particular technology. Is that right? And I think there's that's where there's some some space for some interesting discussion because I think during the workshop, customer discovery was tending to go more towards like end users of the software. And as well as people that might want to be contributors, but still considering them in this customer framework, because they were talking a lot about value propositions. But I think this, there's a lot of room to expand that out to talk about things like, you know, there are just straight end users, there are contributors, maintainers, you know, it's even getting into like ideas around identifying people who are going to be essential to your governance structure, et cetera, et cetera. But it's okay, but it's not just customer in the sense yeah i think that's where there's there's some opportunity for discussion around like you know maybe shifting conversations away from saying specifically things like customer discovery and more I get you. you know are the, are there terms that not only better align with op with open source development but also align with Fair. you know chaos and et cetera et cetera Okay, yeah, just, just bring this. This is just like I just got out of this workshop like like two weeks ago. So it's really fresh, <laughs> top top of mind. It's, it's, it's very fresh, but it it was very. It, it 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 it. You're actually answering a big question for me, knowing that I core is very smoke focused more on like small business, uh, type of things because it did it did feel a little bit more flavored toward that. Okay. Yep. I don't mean that as a criticism. Just like, oh, it just is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, um. Okay. No, this is great. Um, do, do any of you collect telemetry data on any of your projects? No, like just any downstream use, this conversation just made me think of that, like how people are say downloading and installing or forking your projects. We're, we're trying to encourage that. Okay. Um, we're seeing slow pick up personally at CMU, but like we've been, um, well, uh, we've engaged uh, SCARF. Yeah, it, we're using, we're gonna try that too. And with some of the chaos tools. And so yeah. we don't, 
I don't, we don't have a great answer on it yet. And maybe you're in the same spot we are just like trying to figure it out. I, I don't know if this is related to the question you're asking. Um, we're having a really good working relationship with Scarf. Um, mm -hmm. We're just having, we're just seeing slow pickup on okay. our side with faculty. And like currently I think it's very much a communications marketing issue on my end, but uh, but yeah, that in, in terms of like, are we interested in that? Yes, and we're trying to encourage it. Uh, okay. We just don't have a lot of projects on um, within that uh, tool yet. Sure, got you. Okay, does anybody else? Cause that, I kind of see that as tied to the discussion here. Like if we're looking at this downstream, <laughs> the different roles that people have and the telemetry tier data could at least tell us like user segments not necessarily people who are maintainers, but um, yeah, David. Um, I had a sort of high level question about the workshop. Um, I mean, we have the curious workshop. Are you talking about aligning it with that or being separate or having a different audience um, of maybe OSPOs that aren't part of curious or S S Sloan grant? Um, we could maybe talk a little bit about I think ours would be necessarily metrics focused. I don't know if the curious workshop is doing kind of that deep dive on that type of focus. We could talk through that. I mean, not metrics specific. Okay. It's academic OSPO specific. Okay. Um, what is the curious workshop? Um, it's every twice a year for all the Sloan grantee um, OSPO. Yeah, so the, I think the hope People. would be to bring in more than just the Sloan folks that are funded. Okay. Um, wh when is the next one? When and where? Do you know? Because it could. Uh, it's going to be in December, early December. Um, okay. I think we do December and June. Is, is the, the okay. two times each year. Where is it going to be? Do you know? We haven't decided yet. <clears throat> okay. People are leaning towards somewhere warm. So we're hoping Angela. Yeah, I that know, won't be in Madison because it's yeah. going to be really cold. <laughs> <laughs> I know Stephanie has, has offered California. <laughs> we're, we're doing next fall. So I, 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 I mean, I'd be happy to be a backup, but Claire is hosting two meetings next fall. Um, one for the, um, I think it's the Inner Source Foundation, and then one for the OSPOs, and we're going to dovetail those. So we're we're doing next November, I think. Okay. Mm. So hopefully California. Okay, Southern California in December. <laughs> um. Allison, do you have do you have thoughts on the audience? I don't know that we've talked about that too much. Yeah, I remember we talked a little bit about that it could potentially be people beyond um, the Sloan funded academic OSPOs, um, you know, having a more of that metrics focus might open up the audience a little bit, but I don't know if we got further than that. Okay. For those of you that were at the thing at the UN, were there a lot of other universities that are doing open source work that aren't Sloan funded? Did you pick that up at all? I felt like everyone there had some sort of Sloan connection. Okay. Yeah, there were a lot of other OSPOs, you know, there were government OSPOs or industry OSPOs, but not, I didn't notice any academic OSPOs that weren't Sloan. Okay. Um, what about, okay. Angela, you had brought up that municipality connection. That might be something to kind of think about here as well for this workshop, <laughs> like how the university is tied. I was the... really resonating with, with that, what Angela was saying. That aligns with, um, I've had some discussions with Jacob Green and it sounds like you were <laughs> totally in line with what Jacob Green wants to do. Oh, um, he, that work is so cool. Yeah, so I don't know. I think that um, he's talked about like having a mid-Atlantic OSPO network 
um, that would be similar to the California, the UC network that yep. might bring in some HBCUs um, and expand, you know, the OSPAs. So having metrics tied to, to building that around impacting your local communities, I think would be really exciting. Okay. And I really think like, especially as like AI gets on board, this concept of open is going to be really, really important um, because I think um, when we start to talk about ethical data, data that's been vetted in, in public sources and public places that we're pumping through models and software, like OSPOs kind of have visibility, whether we focus on it or not, we have visibility into the data world, the model world, the software world, and then ability to kind of see where that goes. And I just think as a connective source in that arena where you're trying to build stuff, there's no better place than academia or the public sector um, because that's where all the open is. I don't know. I had such, I wrote like four pages of like notes on that and was like, I should come back and, and do a whole series of articles on it because it was so just light bulbs everywhere going off. Uh, such a good conversation. Um, I think this list is pretty good. Allison, do you have, I don't know if you can see the list, but there's a lot, I think. That yeah, no, I you. think, I think this is great. It's a, it's a good place to start for sure. And to your question, David, like we'll definitely bring this back to the group here so that we're not duplicating efforts with what's going on at Curious and in fact, just complementing the work between the two groups. Um, and in fact, may, I don't know if how you do the agendas or curious, but there may be some things in here too that if you don't make it into a smaller proposal, could be nice conversation points for curious in the future. I think it would be awesome if if they're aligned, you know, at least on the schedule. <laughs> so if we're going to California, yeah. you know, we're we're we get two days instead of just one day for that trip. Yep, would be fantastic. Um, well, let me know it. Let me know where it is. <laughs> let us know if when you have a spot. If it's in San Diego, that'd be excellent in December. <laughs> um, and who knows? I mean, it may not be quick enough to be done in December. You know what I mean? Just with the NSF, and any sort of review process. So it might be something that we would look at in June. I think it's maybe what you said yeah. as well. Okay. Um, thank you. That was really a great conversation. That was yes. very cool. thoughtful. <laughs> it gives us some nice headings to work with. <laughs> For sure. Um, and again, we'll bring this back here um, to get feedback. So um, I just, the last thing I wanted to, the second thing, I guess, is just to draw your attention. If you haven't noticed on Slack, at least in the university channel, there has been talk about starting up a new chaos working group with David and Ruth around the UN SDGs. Um, I think the intention is to kind of take a look at how metrics play a role in that. I think Don was real careful to point that out in that conversation as well. So taking a look at how um, metrics play a role in kind of working with the UN SDGs or focusing on the US SD, uh, SDGs, UN SDGs. I think our intention, as David knows, because he's been invited to Europe, I think about 17 times now, our plan is to kick this off at Open Source Summit Europe um, during an unconference session to see who has an interest in kind of getting this working group off the ground. I've reached out to the Linux Foundation event staff and they were they thought it sounded great because I think this conversation, from what I understand, I wasn't at the UN thing, but the final day kind of said, all right, there was like a like orders, like go out and and try to put this work into practice. And so I think the Linux Foundation was real eager to continue this conversation. Um, so I don't know how closely I just I guess I had kind of that last what if any, would your universities have an interest in kind of thinking about these UN SDGs, but that was one of the first things that came up <laughs> back here in the proposal. So um, perhaps quite a bit. Um, David, do you, do you have any thoughts on on this? I know that we're going to kind of get feedback in Vienna, I think is where OSS Europe is, but do you have thoughts prior to that? 
Um, I'm sad that I'm not going to be able to go to Vienna. Um, yeah, I, I'm learning this working group world thing. Like if you ask a question, all of a sudden you're maybe leading a working group. And so oh, we... I asked a question <laughs> at the hospitals for good and Michael Downey responded um, and, and a bunch of other people responded. Um, and then all of a sudden there's a working group and I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of it. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, anyway, I can help. Um, and a lot of other people have jumped in. So I think it's going to be interesting to like scope it and figure out how I agree with Dawn, um, you know, scoping it to how do you measure open source projects impact on SDGs? Um, I have a lot of concerns about how you do that um, without making some burdensome, you know, requirements um, and making it more of a self-reporting kind of voluntary thing. But I, I think we can talk through all that and it should be fun. It's a good group of people. Jonathan Starr is an, another person that is excited to, to join. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to work with Ruth and see what we can do. Let Dude. us know how to support. Yeah. I'm uh, excited. Do your universities talk about the UN SDGs? I actually yep. just talked to a, um, a student group called uh, GW Hacks. Hack, they, they do hackathons. They, they know, like the students just know the SDGs. I think it's really, um, they're very excited to, to be a part of it. I think it's something where universities being able to measure, you know, how their projects and research are impacting them is, would be very valuable going forward. So yeah, that's my thoughts. Okay. We have a, a CMU has an office, uh, actually housed within the libraries, our sustainability initiative that is about uh, connecting and tracking our work with SDGs. Okay. Does it track the work of the OSPO? Like when you say our work, is it the work at CMU or just Work like... at CMU globally. Okay. Um, okay. David mentioned Jonathan Starr. We, we just started, um, working with him on that mapping project like last week. <laughs> I think it's like for us, it's an exciting first step to connecting to the SDGs. But yeah, just to answer your question, yeah, it, it's okay. very important at CMU. Okay. I think that doesn't surprise me because I think I remember Saeed talking about them like a year ago <laughs> and kind of bringing them forward. So. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest, biggest challenges we're going to have is that the there are so many people that are super excited about the SDGs in general, and there's all this flurry of work going on around it. So, you know, I was having a, I was having a conversation with, with Jacob and he's like, I don't think chaos is, is where this belongs. I'm like, no, 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 we're not, we're not trying to do all the stuff about the SDGs. Um, so I, I do think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be hard for us to continue to rein it in and to scope it and let let other people work on, or maybe some of the same people, but in different venues, work on all of the other stuff that needs to happen to make the SDGs successful. Um, but we can we can focus our on, on our our own little piece of the world over here. I talk with Jake Jacob also. Um, I think he's come around a little bit on that. Um, I think he agrees the chaos is fantastic location because of your international, you know, reach. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I, I think it's, I think it's good. It's going to be interesting to like scope it down. I think there's tons of work just to come up with like some standards and some ways of communicating these things, you know, that you have the, you have the, um, categories, but then you also have the, the more detailed targets, um, and figuring out how to capture that in some way so that, yeah, I think Jonathan is focused on the other side of it, like grabbing all of that data once we kind of help get some standards created. So uh, there's so many different aspects of it. It would be fantastic next year at the UN Auspice for Good to have some kind of way of, you know, at, at least prototype showing that we can we can look at across the GitHub and and see which projects are are addressing which which of the different topics. That'd be great. I mean even if it was just kind of an incremental step forward like of, of all, I don't know. There seem to be a lot of SDGs. I'm not sure how many, um, but 17. Could, oh, okay. And but then they could, have like eight to 10 of these more defined targets within each one of the SDGs. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, but if yeah, if we could kind of highlight a couple of those and show how open source work is having an impact, that'd be cool. Um, it'd also be nice to talk about um, not just the metrics, but the methods by which that gets done. That'd be a lot of fun, just so people could potentially replicate that in their own work. I also think, I've been thinking about this a little bit recently. I think this is a really cool opportunity to bring more people to open source because there's so much work to be done to like self-report, you know, on these topics. And it's not coding work. It's, it's work that almost anybody can do. They can just like figure out, is this project addressing these topics and these targets? Um, and so it, it'd be, we can maybe figure out some way to create really simple issues around this that people could start you know, solving and, and just grow the open source community in general. I think there'd be a, what I'm seeing the excitement of like being in, involved in a working group. I think that would also be, we could also extend that to just users in general coming to open source and looking at projects and seeing how they could help, you know, create this documentation that could help us dedupe projects and, and really track things and work together globally. I'm excited. I like it. Uh, cool. Uh, so I just, I, sounds like there's a, and I, I, I'm bringing it up here because I feel like there's a lot of overlap with the folks that are on this call and the, this potentially new working group. So not potentially this new working group. Uh, so maybe I was thinking in the, um, at least in Slack, we could put, try to put together something prior to Vienna for Georg that he could structure the unconference just a little bit. So he just kind of knows the questions to ask or the ways to guide people, but that was it. So I just wanted to bring that to people's attention and thanks for all the really good thoughts on that. All right, we have, look, we've reached the end. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to hear from that, the thing in Boston this week, if anybody submitted a paper to that I'm talking about? Yeah, the Open Forum Academy, the OFE's event at Harvard. Um, the yeah, the notifications are supposed to go out today. Okay. Well, I have, I have not. I I have submitted things and have not heard back. Okay. Um, well, if any of you are going to that, I do plan at least going. Hopefully, going to that. If I'm not going to that, then you'll know my paper got rejected. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was your topic? What did you submit on? Uh, dependencies. How to. Oh how to identify dependencies as socio-technical constructions, not just technical nice. dependencies, so. Yeah, that'd be a good topic for that. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, it's it's good to see you all. I know we had a little bit of a break, but yeah. and try to keep it together as your universities <laughs> come back online <laughs> and the meetings go from, from a one or a two all summer to to a 10 or 11. <laughs> so, all right, take care. Bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.